Hi, I'm Christina and these are the best books that I've read in 2022 so far. So I have seven books here to talk about. I have two historical fiction, one mystery, one thriller, one science fiction, one contemporary and one romance. So I'm going to talk about my absolute favourites at the very end but I think all of these books are absolutely wonderful. I had such a good time with every single one. So the first one I have here is The Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is her debut novel and it's a mystery novel. So the thing that I love so much about this book is the format of it. The entire story is presented as a pack of evidence given to two trainee lawyers and we're at the stage of The Appeal. We know that someone has been murdered and we know that somebody is in prison for the crime. Now, all of the evidence is text messages, email exchanges, and it's just really engaging. And I was having so much fun trying to work out who has been killed, who is in prison, what's actually happening. And all of the characters in this story are involved in an amateur dramatics play. And they feel so believable, these characters. Some of the messages back and forth between them are so rude and so abrupt. And all of these people feel like genuinely real people. And you're looking at all of this evidence and just trying to work out what's actually happened, who is dead, who is the victim, who is the killer. And I thought it was really, really good. I had such a good time with it. And it was just a really enjoyable reading experience for me. And it's definitely one of my favourite mystery novels because of that reason. It was just so much fun. I had such a good time with it. So the best thriller that I've read is The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor. So this is a thriller with horror elements and I really, really enjoyed this one. It is such a fast paced read and there are so many twists and turns in this story and all of those twists and turns towards the end completely threw me. I had no idea what was coming and it was just such a great reveal. There's so many great reveals in this story. And it was just one of the best thrillers that I've read for a really, really long time. So we follow a vicar and their daughter as they're moving to a new small town. And this town has a very dark past. Um, we had two girls who were burned at the stake during Queen Mary I's reign and it's now become a village tradition to make effigies of these little girls and burn them in the bonfire, hence the burning girls. And the town has also had more horrors in its more recent history and it's just... It's just so, so good. I don't want to give you anything at all about the plot, but I just really enjoyed this. So many twists and turns, so much fun. I did not want to put this book down. It got to the stage where I genuinely didn't go to bed and I just carried on reading this because I couldn't put it down. So yeah, great, great thriller. Would highly, highly recommend it. It's very light paranormal, so don't go into this expecting that because I think you would be disappointed. But otherwise, this is just... It's just a great, fun, fast-paced thriller, and this is how thrillers should be done. So then I have The Island of Missing Trees by Alif Shafak, and this is a historical fiction novel, and I just thought the writing in this story was absolutely beautiful. It was so captivating. It was so poignant. I just thought this story was absolutely wonderful. So we follow a teenage girl who's living in London with her father. It's the late 2010s. Her mother is a Turkish Cypriot and her father is a Greek Cypriot. And then we go back in time to the 1970s in Cyprus when her parents first met. And it's a generational story. We follow this family over quite a large period of time and we go back and forth between these two alternating timelines. And like I said, I just thought it was absolutely wonderful. There is so many great themes in this story. It's a book about love, about family, about friendship, about grief. It's also a story about belonging and identity and community. And I just thought it was done really, really well. And the theme of nature is very strong in this one too. There is a lot of focus on plants and animals and particularly trees. One of the narrators is a fig tree and I absolutely loved that. I thought it was so unique, so imaginative. And I thought it really added so much to the story. It just gave it a whole new layer. And I thought this book was just, it was captivating. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. The writing is some of the most beautiful writing I've read in a very, very long time. And yeah, just a really, really great read. 
So another book that I really enjoyed this year is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a romance novel and I was so connected to these characters. We first meet our main character as she's celebrating her father's birthday with her family and her fiance and then she receives a phone call from her husband. Her husband who has been presumed dead for a number of years. Now I thought this was such an interesting exploration on love and it wasn't just a simple question of who would you pick, your husband or your fiance, even though you're in love with them both. It was more a question of who would you rather be, the person who you are when you're with your husband or the person you are when you're with your fiance. And she's essentially a different person now since the grief of losing her husband and just the way in which she now perceives life and what she wants out of life is so very different from when she knew him. And I thought it was just such a clever way of doing a story and I really got a lot out of this one. I thought it was absolutely excellent. And yeah, I was so interested in these characters. I was so interested in her decision and it wasn't just as simple, this is the good guy and this is the bad guy. It was a lot more nuanced than that. And yeah, it was really, really good. I really, really enjoyed this one. So now we're on to my top three favourite novels of 2022. And I have Salt Lick by Lulu Allison. So this is a science fiction novel. It's quite light science fiction in the sense that this feels like it could truly happen. It's set in a Britain not too dissimilar from our own. We're seeing the effects of climate change and we're seeing the after effects of a deadly pandemic too. And we follow a few different characters over a number of years. And I have to say, I thought this was very, very hard hitting. I found this to be a very emotional read and I was absolutely captivated by this story and these characters. There is also a herd of feral cows in this story and that is dispersed as little pieces of poetry throughout the narrative. And I have to say, I didn't think that would work for me, but I really, really liked it. It was very poignant and I just really, really enjoyed this one. I thought it was unlike anything I've ever really read before and I thought it worked really, really well. It was a little bit experimental and it definitely paid off. And I just thought all of these characters in here were so well developed. There was one part of this story which really hit me hard and I just couldn't believe what had happened. And I had to flick back a few chapters and just confirm that what I had read had actually happened. And it had, and it definitely was very hard hitting. And yeah, this one is going to stay with me for a long time, I think. I initially had only given this book four stars, but it's been a couple of months now and I'm still thinking about this book regularly. So it's, it's definitely one of my favorites of the year. And it's definitely one of my favorite science fiction novels of all time, actually. I thought this was really, really good. And I think it's uh, not very well known either. I know it was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2022 which is where I first heard about it, but I've not heard that many people talking about it. So I think it's a little bit of a hidden gem and I think you should definitely give it a go if uh, a little bit of light science fiction, it sounds like something that would be up your street. So my second favourite book of 2022 is Flamingo by Rachel Elliott and this is a contemporary novel. We follow two main characters and they're both at a crossroads in their life and then we jump back in time to when they were both children and they were living next door to each other and these two neighbouring families are very very close and they spend so much time together. So this story really focuses on family and it focuses on found family and belonging and feeling part of a community and there's also a big theme of loneliness in this story and of hope and of grief and of love as well and I thought it was done really really well. It's written so beautifully. I was so captivated by this story and I thought all the characters were really really well developed and I was very much connected to these characters in this story too. It was just a really great read and I really really enjoyed it. I think this one is another hidden gem because I don't think that many people are actually talking about it and it's really really good and I would highly recommend that you pick it up. So my favourite book of 2022 is The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. This is a historical fiction novel and it's set initially in the late 1800s and it spans a century. We first meet our main character when she is a young girl of five years old. 
Her father is one of the lexicographers working on compiling the Oxford English Dictionary and much like her father, she has a passion for words and for language. One day while she's sitting in the scriptorium underneath all of the men working on the dictionary, a small piece of paper carrying the word bond made flutters down to her and she takes it. And this is the start of the Dictionary of Lost Words. Now I thought this story was absolutely wonderful. It was a complete joy to read. I was absolutely captivated by this and I was very much connected to all of these characters. I thought it was such an emotional read it made me cry multiple times and I thought it was a very impactful read overall. It was also unlike anything I've ever really read before. I love the way that she mixes true history with a tale of fiction. So the word bond maid was in fact missing from the first edition of the Oxford English Dictionary and some of these characters in this story actually did exist. And then she weaves that truth and that history with a whole tale of fiction. And I thought it was just absolutely wonderful. It was genuinely a joy to read and it's one I will definitely be rereading in the future. And I think this is going to be a story that stays with me for a very long time. So yes, I thought it was absolutely wonderful. The characters are excellent. It was so, so, so lovely and I would highly, highly recommend you read it. So these are the seven best books that I've read so far in 2022. I think it's great that I found some new favourites in basically every single genre that I enjoy reading. And there's just some absolutely wonderful books here. I think most of these are probably going to be new all-time favourites. I also think it's great that three books here I've read because of the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. I don't think I would have read any of them had it not been for that long list. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed every single one of these. I would highly recommend them all. They're all really, really wonderful. If you have read any of these, I would love to know your thoughts on them down in the comments below. And if you're interested in reading any of them now, please definitely let me know that too. And then I'd love it if you told me what is your best book of 2022? I know it's a very, very hard question. I sat here for quite a long time looking through everything I'd read and compiling this list of my favourite seven. And then once I'd chosen my favourite seven, I spent a little bit more time trying to put them in ranking order, which is always tricky for a book lover. So yes, I thought these were all absolutely wonderful books. I would highly recommend you read any single one of them that you thought looks interesting. So thank you so much for watching. Please do like the video if you've liked it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more of me talking about books. See you in my next one. Bye.